Hello everybody and welcome once again to Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in downtown Brevard, North Carolina. I'm coming to you from my house today. It's my day off, which is when I do this on Mondays. You didn't get one last Monday because I needed a break. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We've been going nonstop for a year now, basically, since the world fell apart. And we had a Valentine's Day sale yesterday online in the shop. Follow social media to find out more about those lovelies. And so I have to go into the shop today just to prep some orders because, oh my gosh, thank you. But wow, we have a lot to deal with. So I thought I would do just a small video today instead of leaving you high and dry for the second week in a row. I thought we'd talk about basic structure of shawls, of what you can make in knit and crochet, both that often get termed shawls and how you tell the difference, especially if you're searching on Ravelry, of what you're looking at, what you might be purchasing, so you know what you're getting into. So we're gonna talk about that really briefly today and then I'm gonna run into the shop and meet up with Liz and we're gonna pack up some of your orders. So I'm gonna show you on some of my works in progress what some of these are, which means I don't have like full finished things to show you and make sense of them. So watch the Sun Dragon sideshow. You can see what Liz and I are working on and finishing that looks like a shawl, right? And some people hear shawls and they go, oh, I don't, those, those things you wear around your neck, you, things you wrap around your shoulders. I don't know, those are so old fashioned. First of all, some of them might be called old fashioned and they're absolutely gorgeous. And second of all, there are many ways to wear shawls you can wear them wrapped around your shoulders, which is how Liz wears a lot of hers, and then she doesn't need jackets. It's fantastic because she makes them big and bulky. You also, I tend to wear my shawls wrapped around my neck. You hang the middle of it right here, and then you wrap both sides around, and you end up really wearing it more like a scarf, and it's very fashionable. Either way is fashionable. You have to decide what you like and what you think looks good on you, but please don't dismiss shawls because you may not want to wear them how someone else would. You can wear them any way you want, and I think they're quite fashionable either way, across the back or around your neck. So let's get to it. So shawl, or I also put the word scarf in here, styles. Really the shawl styles, but then you can wear them as scarves. So things that wrap around your neck. I'll call it neck wear for right now, because it can go around your neck from the back side and be worn on the back, or around the front and be worn like a scarf. Things that might be considered neckwear, right? So there's two different types of triangle shawls. The first one that might be most people's classical definition of a triangle shawl, I'm going to call a symmetrical shawl. So it's like, ugh, if my high school math, is that an isosceles triangle, I think, where you've got two sides that are equal and one longer side. It's symmetrical. You could fold it in half. You could fold it in half and both sides are the same. Symmetry. These are, there's two different types you might see. The most classic version, you're going to cast on up here. And you're going to work down. So you cast on with just a few stitches. And then you have increases both in the center here. Oftentimes they're at either side of the center spine. So we might call this the spine. Either side of the center and along the edges on every, say, right side row. So we have increases. on either edge and either side of the middle spine. Now how fast it expands depends on if that happens every row, every other row, every fourth row. The most classic version is going to be on every right side row, so every other row, you have increases happening in four places. Now some versions Some versions will actually start at the bottom and increase as you just as you go up. 
So our first version in red here, you're casting on and you are, the direction of knitting goes that way, goes down. And it will feel kind of backwards when you first start because you'll be like, isn't this the point? No, that's not the point of the shawl. As you go and get further away from your cast on, you'll discover the point. Your last row will be out here at the end. So this first one that I, that I started, your last, this is your bind off. For the alternate version, the other version you might have of a triangle shawl, cast on at the bottom. And on this one, oftentimes you'll only increase at the edges. The bind off, if you're doing one from that goes bottom up, will be up along the top. So in symmetrical shawls, you have two possibilities. Some good examples of a triangle shawl, there's the goodie shawl that just has a classical shape. That's what was in Little Women and Outlander and things like that. The butterfly shawl is a fancy version of a symmetrical triangle shawl. You could fold it over and it will look the same. There are a lot of really great examples of triangle shawls. The Reina, which is a great one skein shawl project, is a wonderful example of a triangle shawl. Now the other version of triangle shawls, look at all the geometry here, is one that's called an asymmetrical. And instead of symmetrical, symmetry, this one's asymmetrical. There isn't symmetry to it. You cannot fold it in the middle either direction and have it match. If I took it this way or this way, if you fold it in half, you would not have pieces that look like they are the same. So asymmetrical shawls, really most of them, most of them will start down here. And they travel in this direction. And they become bigger because you are increasing maybe only one or two stitches every row or every other row. And depending on where it increases, depending on if it increases on the straight edge or the side over here that's expanding, the beginning or the end of the row, they increase at the beginning or the end of the row, but only on one side will create this shape. Sometimes if they increase at the beginning of the row, you'll actually get a slight curve to your asymmetrical shawl. The night shift is a great example of this. Andrea Mowry loves asymmetrical shawls. I'm working on the honey and moss right now. Other designers who have asymmetrical shawls, the stormy sky shawl, Dee O'Keefe makes both, designs both symmetrical and asymmetrical shawls. But usually they start with only a few stitches, you're going this direction, and your bind off is over here. Every once in a while you may find one that casts on over here. Occasionally you will have a cast on that goes this way and decreases and it will decrease along an edge too. Oh, that wasn't in the screen. Yeah, let's take a look at that again. Occasionally I can think of a crochet version. The Hotel of Bees is one that starts big and decreases as you go. But usually they will start small and get bigger and the benefit of that is you can practice your repeat if there's something that repeats a lot and you can practice it on a really small number of stitches until you get the hang of it so when it gets bigger it is not as much of a challenge because you've already done it many many times when it was smaller some people might want to just make a rectangle wrap yeah I, I put in here parentheses something that is rectangular shaped might just call a wrap 
or you could call it a scarf. A wrap is often a wide scarf. But here's the benefit of a wrap. Most often, you are casting on on one side and you are just going straight across. There are no increases, there are no decreases. Straight across and you are done. It's the same thickness all the way around. It's easy to wear multiple ways. There we have a rectangle. Not a lot going on with that, but they can be absolutely beautiful. The last one that we'll talk about today is one called a crescent wrap or crescent shawl or crescent scarf. Now a crescent, as you can tell with the shape of it, we've got the points on the ends, but there is a graceful curve to it rather than a sharp point at the center here. And crescent shawls, both in crochet and knit, often start right here, right here in the middle of the top, for knitting, they'll often do a garter tab cast on to try to make this edge look like it seamlessly goes all the way across. So the cast on is right there and the increases often are only on the edges. But sometimes there'll be double increases on the edges which will make it slope out really, really fast and wide. It may not be all that deep as compared to a, a symmetrical triangle shawl because it's not increasing in the centers as well as the edges, it's only increasing along the edge. It won't have a center spine. It is symmetrical, but it is not a triangle in that it does not have a center spine because you're not increasing along the center like you are over there. It will have a slope to it. It's very pretty and often have a pattern that goes all the way across. And this one, it's really easy to wear as a scarf because you don't necessarily have to worry about where that center is. I will say that the asymmetrical, you can totally wear wrapped around your neck. You often have some funky edges to it because it's not symmetrical. But the crescent, I'm working on Stay Out of the Forest, which is a crescent but also has chevrons in it, so the bottom edge is going to be all kinds of funky and not necessarily have this edge to it. The Chain by Cheryl Faust is one I've made recently, um, or in the past year. The Lightweight Hipster is a great one skein crescent shawl I had a lot of fun with just recently. So it's really fun. Anyway, those are the four shapes you'll often see of bigger neck wear in knitting and crochet. Let me show you really briefly a couple of the projects I'm working on and then I gotta run. <laughs> so this is the part of the video where usually I, um, I'm showing you things up close with my hands and the needles and all the stuff but I'm gonna turn the camera this way so I can show you things that I'm working on that fit the definition of all the things I just showed you. So, um, triangle, like I mentioned, and some of these are going to be harder to show off because on the needles you won't see the full shape. But this is what I have at my house. Last minute decision, right? So this is my Papillon so far. And this is an example of a fancier triangle, symmetrical triangle shawl. It started right here. Here's the center spine right there in the middle and every right side row that's full you're increasing on the edges and you're increasing on either side of the center spine so it gets bigger in a very symmetrical way so that's one another one I have buried under here that is knit this is my long languishing triangle garter wrap it is in the middle of a row unfortunately let me see if I can really quickly slide over to the edge. I think I was showing someone a technique on this because I haven't actually picked up and knit it in a long time. It's got a stitch marker on it. You don't really need stitch markers with this. The easy garter wrap, triangle wrap. I'll try to find the right name for it. This one 
Let me turn it so you can't see where I changed skeins or had a problem. And there's ends to weave in. <laughs> this one simply started, see how it doesn't have that angled V shape. This one started down here and just went straight across and every row you're adding on to the edge. And so it is symmetrical. It is too big for my needles right now to fully stretch out and show you. It's symmetrical, but it's going from the bottom up. Most go from the top down. Here is the crochet shawl that I'm working on, the Nessie shawl. This one, again, you might start to recognize. This is a triangle shawl that started up here and has increases in along the center spine and also on the edges. And so you have that V shape, but it started at the top. Right now, every row that I'm doing is going to be over here and over here and be really long, really, really long at this point. It's going to be gorgeous when it's done. All right. So then we move to the asymmetrical. This is one that's been on hold because I'm working with this yarn on a sweater right now. This is an asymmetrical, this is by D. O'Keefe, an asymmetrical shawl. It started down there at the point. None of these have been blocked, so it's kind of hard to show shape sometimes. It started down there at the point, and if you can see, this pattern's running straight up because the increases are happening over here. And so as I go, there's more that's being added over here. <laughs> Washes out my face to do this, woo! Um, there's more that's being added along this edge. So this is set in place. This side will keep growing and it will keep getting bigger. But if you think about that picture I drew, we'll have a straight edge and an edge that goes down and it will be asymmetrical when it's done, but it will be gorgeous. I'm also working on the honey moss. I mentioned the honey moss. There's the right side. Started way down there with only a few stitches and got bigger. And this one's gonna have a slight curve to it, but it's still a triangle shawl. Now this edge up here is almost is too big for the needles again, but it's gonna keep getting bigger every time I do a right side row. I'm increasing one stitch. And it gets bigger as you go. Now for a rectangle wrap, this hasn't gotten very far, but I cast on over here. This is the Eze 2 from Espace Tricot. I'm holding two yarns together, which are wanting to get tangled right now. They're right over here. I cast on right here, and I am knitting that way. I can hold it this way. It's straight. It's going to go straight. You're looking at the back side. There we go. <laughs> Not that you can really tell. Look, woo! It's, it's going to keep going straight. It's going to be a very long rectangle by the time I'm done with it, with these little eyelet rows, but there's no increasing and decreasing. There's just knitting straight across, purling straight across, following whatever stitches I'm supposed to be doing straight. It's going to be a rectangle. It's going to be like a loose, a really wide scarf. Remember we mentioned that? Wide scarf. Okay. Now the best example, ooh, one more example of an asymmetrical. I got a lot of projects just hanging around the camera right here. This is my Euclid shawl. And it started here and it's getting bigger as we go. Now, here is, we're hoping my camera's not going to die right now, but here is a really fancier crescent shawl. It started with a garter tab up here and it's getting bigger as it goes. It's really bunched on my needle now, but it, this is only increasing. This has increases and decreases in weird places, but it's, it's making a crescent shape. I don't have a really good crescent shawl at home to show you, but it doesn't have a center spine per se. It's got chevrons within the crescent shape, but it doesn't have that classic V right down the center, right? So that's a crescent shawl. It fits in the crescent definition. Watch the sideshow if you want to see better stuff. Um, I'm just going to sign off right now because I got a low battery on my phone and it's going to die soon. So I'm going to sign off with you right now. 
May your crafting be filled with joy and confidence. And let me know what else you want to see. Please subscribe, like, share this with your friends and neighbors so more people can learn really cool things about knit and crochet. We're here to help. Have a really great Monday. Bye-bye. Hi, kitty. Were you upset I moved my feet? Yes. Oh. Yeah, that's stay away. I'm not happy. I get it.